Hi, this is the first part of the series dedicated to crossovers found in multiband plugins from Melda Production. In this first tutorial, we're going to discuss the interface of the multiband plugins and the classic frequency split crossovers. A multiband plugin can be easily identified by MB abbreviation added at the end of the plugin's name. MXXX is also capable of building multiband effects. Traditionally, when we say a crossover, we mean a frequency split crossover. That is, a full frequency range gets split into frequency intervals or bands. After splitting, we can apply an effect to each band signal, and after that, we mix all band outputs together. If we don't do anything with individual bands, the output mix will be exactly the same as the original, except for a potential phase shift. We say that such a crossover is transparent. To work with a crossover, you have to be in the edit mode, not the easy one. The crossover is always located on the top. You can close and open its pane by clicking on this button. The crossover is represented as a graph with two axes. Here we can see the frequency and level. The white vertical bars define split frequencies, one of the most important crossover's parameters. The spaces between them are bands. To select a band, simply click on it. The plugin's controllers corresponding to the currently selected band are located right under the crossover. Each band has some additional controls. First, there are mute, solo, and bypass buttons. You can use them to audition only specific bands, bypass processing in some to say CPU. In the following example, I'm going to use these buttons to check how M Saturator MB affects the mix. There are gain and panorama sliders, which are useful for some basic processing. To manage a band, right click on the band and it will open up the band's configuration panel. Here, you can insert, delete, Expand the band, create a default band number, and reset the gain and panorama to their default values. Here's the trick. If you already have a necessary number of bands, and you just want to evenly distribute them along the frequency axis, simply click on the corresponding button in the Create Default Bands pane. On the right, we find the Analyzers panel, a great tool for setting up a crossover's split frequencies. Your main options are going to be the Frequency Analyzer and Sonogram. The Crossovers panel is located in the middle of the Configuration panel. Here, we choose a type of crossover we want to use. Currently, there are 10 of them. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the first four. Analog, Analog LP, Linear Phase, and Hybrid. The Analog algorithm is based on the analog crossovers used in various hardware. It's far more powerful, though. It has no latency, but introduces a phase shift. That, in turn, distorts the signal shape. It may sound bad, however, in reality, this fact doesn't cause any troubles unless you go for a very steep slope. The slope defines separation between the bands measured in decibels per octave. The higher the value, the steeper the slope.
a crossover with very steep filters introduces some noticeable artifacts. Pay attention to the transients. The analog LP is a linear phase version of the analog type. It follows the same slope values, but unlike the analog, it doesn't induce any phase shift. However, it introduces a latency instead, a potentially good choice for mastering, but not for live sound. The next two types are the linear phase and hybrid. They both leave the signal's phase untouched, and similarly to the analog LP, they introduce latency. The difference between them is the slope of filters. Both types have a very steep slope. However, in the case of the linear phase, the slope is progressively increasing as you set a crossover frequency higher and higher. It is all good, but what slope should we choose in a real-life situation? I'm sure you'll come up with your own logic, but for a start, try the following. If you want to give your audio a gentle massage, then try small values like 6 or maximum 12 decibels per octave. And when you are dealing with some problematic material and you need to isolate a part of the spectrum from the rest, try 24 or even 48 decibels per octave, like in the next example with a bass guitar. Now the bass level is steady and its tone has got some presence. Values higher than 48 decibels may look cool, but realistically are not necessary, on a full mix in particular. I'm talking about typical cases. For creative purposes, of course, you can go crazy with slopes. Crossovers in multiband plugins from Melder Production are capable of much more than a classic frequency split, but we'll talk about it in the following tutorials. Thanks for watching.